Thirty-six years ago, America celebrated the bicentennial, and the Carmel Chamber presented its first State of the City Address, given by the city's first mayor, Al Pickett. Mayor Jim Brainer presented his first State of the City Address in 1996. A brief trip down memory lane. You may recall in 1996, Carmel's population was under 30,000. The Fox News Channel was launched by Rob Rupert Murdoch. The Dow topped 6,000. The Yankees beat the Braves in the World Series. eBay debuted, debuted on the internet. Interest rates were eight and a quarter percent. A gallon of gas was only $1.22. Young trick-or-treaters were dressed up as Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> Windows 4.0 was introduced. Internet host computers went from 1 million to 10 million. DVDs were launched in Japan. Your cell phone was likely a Nokia, and it had an antenna sticking out of it. Carmel had no roundabouts. Few cities in the world have experienced the changes ours had in the past 16 years. Mayor Jim Brainerd has been a constant during those years and joins us again for today's 2012 State of the City Address. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Jim Brainerd. Thank you. I want to thank the Carmel Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event again this year. I appreciate the work the Chamber does to help grow and better connect our business community. I'm honored to serve as your mayor, and I'm very pleased to be able to report that the state of the city of Carmel is first rate, and we're not the only ones that feel that way. This year, we were honored with the prestigious designation of being the number one place to live in America by Money Magazine. And I can't think of a better 175th anniversary present for our city. Before I go into details about our number one ranking, I would like to mention some other awards Carmel and its partners have received since the last State of the City Address, and recognize and thank the employees of the City of Carmel for achieving excellence in their respective fields. Carmel, for instance, received the Green Community Award from the Indiana Association of Cities and Towns. Carmel received the Best Adoption Friendly Workplace Award from the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption. The Arbor Day Foundation named Carmel as a Tree City, USA. The Carmel Police Department won the 2012 Model Agency Award from the National Association of School Resource Officers. Our cable channel programs won several national awards for quality, and our producers won the overall award for overall excellence in governmental access programming. Keystone Parkway continues to win national recognition. This year, being named one of the top 10 roads in the nation by roads and Bridges Magazine, and Project of the Year by the American Public Works Association, meeting in Anaheim, California. And the city also accepted the Transportation Achievement Award from the Institute of Transportation Engineers uh, during their meeting in Atlanta, Georgia. These awards reflect the level of expertise as well as the hard work of our city's department heads and the high regard for their innovation and dedication to excellence. Now let me tell you about how our number one ranking for Money Magazine was calculated. It took the 740 cities with populations between 50,000 and 300,000 people and analyzed them using 50 data points, including house, housing prices, median income, and jobs. Writers were then sent to the finalist cities to interview the mayor, eat in local restaurants, visit with residents and learn about the character of the community. They weighed ease of living, commute times, and how much people said they liked living in their city. The senior editor from Money Magazine said that Carmel had everything they were looking for. A vibrant economy, great schools, safe streets, affordability, and that the people in Carmel were happy and enjoyed living in their community. 
When asked if the completion of the Center for the Performing Arts played a role in raising Carmel from its November from its number 14th ranking in the last contest to its number one spot this year, she said yes. She pointed out that Carmel was able to weather the recession very well when many other cities were faltering. She said the amount of arts and leisure activities in the community factored into their decision. She also noted that families told Money Magazine that they kept coming to Carmel to take part in what was going on, so they decided to actually move here. Needless to say, we are very pleased with that ranking, and all of you should be too. This honor comes as a result of the whole community caring about what happens here every day and being patiently involved in making Carmel one of the best places anywhere to conduct business, raise one's family, and enjoy life. And this includes the residents who volunteer to maintain their neighborhood entrances, those who work with the youth through the Carmel Dads Club or volunteer to play with the Carmel Symphony, work at the library or at their church or synagogue. It is also the combination of amenities we have built here in Carmel that had a large part on Money Magazine's ranking. Imagine, for a minute, if we had the Center for the Performing Arts without the Arts and Design District, or without the Indiana Design Center, or imagine great schools for our children without the Monon Trail, Central Park, or the other recreational options. While any of these things is great on its own, having them all in the same community is part of what makes Carmel exceptional. So let me officially thank you and the rest of the community for the part you played in making Carmel number one in the entire United States. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> Earlier, I mentioned that Money Magazine's uh, senior editor said Carmel had a vibrant economy, great schools, safe streets, affordability, and what she called the happiness factor. Let's take a closer look at those elements. First, let's talk about our vibrant economy. The author, Richard Florida, recently wrote a book called The Rise of the Creative Class, in which he suggests that for cities to be successful in the future, they need to attract young people who create things. The top scientists, doctors, business entrepreneurs, and architects. And they can do this, they have to do this providing more lifestyle advantages, such as vibrant arts, culture, sports, entertainment, recreational options, and a more pedestrian-friendly city where people can gather. Carmel is attracting that creative class. Our new master plan downtown, the city center, is a perfect example of drawing technology firms such as software engineering professionals, data processing services, Keller Interactive, and Polio, Pol Polyel Systems, all locating there to offer a dynamic work environment for their young, creative workforce. Being able to attract the best employees has allowed us to attract the best companies with the best jobs. This benefits our residents and businesses by providing a substantial and stable tax base, which allows Carmel to keep our property taxes among the lowest in the state and provides challenging careers for our residents. Having a wide variety of residential housing options helps us attract a workforce from around the globe as well. And that is why our redevelopment projects include housing types not normally built in suburban communities, such as townhomes, condominiums, and downtown apartments in the arts and design district and city center. Now, I want to take a moment and discuss our great public schools. And of course, city government can and should not take credit for the wonderful things happening at our schools. But I appreciate the fact that our school board and the school administration understand the important role they play in the city's economic development efforts. Our public school system attracts, fam attracts families to Carmel. Our schools excel academically, athletically, and in the arts. The high school campus is enhanced by having an award-winning library adjacent, just across the street. We're able to offer, we have an adjacent facility, we're able to offer undergraduate and graduate college classes. Wonderful op options for students here in Carmel. The third topic mentioned by Money Magazine's editor was our safe street.
streets. And our hard-working fire, police, engineering, and street departments ensure that we have the luxury of living in a city where we are safe. Our low crime rate is half that of the average city on the Money Magazine 100 list. Let me say that again. Out of the top 100 cities, we're at half that average crime rate. Our police department is one of the very few fully accredited police departments in the state of Indiana. Our fire department is also currently engaged in the accreditation process. Our engineering department continues to receive national acclaim for its innovations. And our street department keeps the roads well maintained and clear of snow and ice. And of course, I have to mention the 75 round, you knew it was coming, the 75 roundabout and they, how they reduce injury accidents by 80% when contrasted with stoplight intersections with the same traffic volumes. Another characteristic Money Magazine noted was that we were affordable and that people with normal incomes could live here. It's important that we continue to have economic diversity in the community and one way to accomplish that is to continue providing one of the best values in the country. When one considers the overall cost of living, our amenities, taxes, water and sewer charges being among the lowest in the state, there is no better value. This summer also provided a clear example of the exceptional value that Carmel offers. Neighboring water utilities ban water usage not because of a shortage of water, but because of an inability to pump and treat enough of central Indiana's, Indiana's plentiful underground water. Carmel, on the other hand, continued to have clean, fresh, softened water in abundant supply because we had built a system of wells and treatment plants to meet the demands of our rapidly growing population. Our new water treatment facility came online this summer in the midst of the drought. The facility is LEED registered and was partially built by city employees, saving the ratepayers about a quarter of a million dollars. It is also the first water plant in Indiana to use geothermal heating and cooling from treated water that's been recycled and used again. Now, what the Money, Minute, money Editor referred to when she talked about happiness. Well, you might think it's strange for Money Magazine to emphasize the happiness factor, don't underestimate its fundamental importance. Our founding fathers found it important enough to include in the Declaration of Independence. They were seeking a better life, one that would allow all people to enjoy certain unalienable rights endowed by the Creator, and among those were life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They felt that the freedom to enjoy life was essential. Some people find happiness through spending time with family and friends, a fulfilling career, attending or participating in the arts, attending city festivals and events, pursuing recreational activities or outdoor leisure activities. We're trying to build a city for our citizens that reduces the stress of traffic jams, reduces the stress of worrying about crime in a hectic lifestyle. A city that fulfills the promise laid out by the drafters of the Declaration of Independence. Much of our economic success is a result of our redevelopment projects. I'd like to take a moment to clarify some points about the detailed planning involved in our redevelopment efforts and better explain the role the tax increment financing plays in it. The primary tool provided by state law to encourage redevelopment is tax incremental financing, commonly referred to as TIF, T-I-F. It is also important to note that Carmel is one of many cities in Indiana that uses TIF for redevelopment. This is how TIF works. An economic redevelopment area is designated by the City Council with specific boundaries and a base tax year is established. Then for a period up to 25 years, all increases in commercial tax income above the base year's amount goes into a fund 
that is used for redevelopment, for the infrastructure needed by redevelopment. That money is used generally for parking structures and garages, streetscapes, <coughs> sidewalks, environmental remediation, and purchasing land. Carmel is aggressively using the tools provided by state law to redevelop our older areas where we all, and this is the key, in areas where we already have multi-million dollar roads, we already have fire stations and police protection, we already have expensive underground utilities in place. The funds to build the Center for the Performing Arts, the Center Green where the farmers markets held and the parking garages came from TIF revenue. I believe and continue to advocate that our redevelopment efforts are the best long-term strategy for keeping our taxes low. Redeveloping is not nearly as expensive compared to the long-term cost of greenfield development, where the true costs are not always readily identified up front. For instance, replacing a county road with a city street can cost as much as $7 million a mile. Many cities with too much sprawl can't maintain their infrastructure, which limits their ability to provide the funds needed for good schools and all the amenities that we have built in Carmel. Our TIF bonds are carefully timed to be paid in full when the TIF districts expire at the end of the 25 years. The taxes that were going toward the TIF bond payments will then come directly back to the community in the form of city, county, township, library, and some school tax income. And based on today's results, that additional income would lower our already tax rate by over 17% while future generations inherit the beautiful amenities, architecturally significant structures, increased property values, commerce, cultural, and sustainable development in the center core of our city. And that's why I believe that TIF is not a burden, but a gift to future generations. There are some that would try to have you believe that we've put too much at risk. They painted a doomsday scenario saying we have jeopardized the future financial integrity of the city by borrowing and investing so much in redevelopment projects. I'll let you decide, but here are some facts. The pro 